The Coast Guard has completed search and rescue efforts and now has opened up a Marine Board of Investigation that's going to investigate the incident of the Titan, which may lead to sanctions or potentially charges. Let's dive in and learn more. Hi everyone, Empowering True Crime Alex here, and this has been a, a, a crazy week. I mean, let's just put it out there. Crazy, just so much going on between finding out that the, the Titan submersible was missing f- Sunday uh, over a week ago to just wait and see from the missing Titan and then finding out that a, a implosion was heard from the Navy right from the beginning. And so the press conference was held yesterday, Sunday, which is a little strange. I've got some thoughts on that, but let's go over the press conference where they discuss how they're closing out one phase and opening up a new phase into an investigation into what happened. And before we do that, let's just take a moment of silence for the five that passed away in the sad tragedy. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you do, you'll get the latest breaking news on this, other missing persons cases, and true crime news. All right, so let's watch the press conference. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we will be hosting a press briefing to officially announce the Coast Guard's convening of a Marine Board of Investigation into the loss of the Titan submersible and the five people on board. Speaking today will be Commander of the 1st Coast Guard District, Rear Admiral John Mogger who will give a brief statement on the search and rescue aspect of the response. Since discovery of the Titan sub wreckage marked the conclusion of the search and rescue aspect of this incident, following Admiral Mauger's remarks, Captain Jason Neubauer, Chief Investigator, will also give a statement. The intention of today's press conference is to shed light on the purpose, scope, and priorities of the Coast Guard's Marine Board of Investigation. Questions should focus on the investigation, Any questions outside this scope should be addressed with our District 1 staff following today's press conference. Please limit your questions to one per outlet, and we will be ending at 10 minutes. I will now introduce Rear Admiral John Mogger. Good afternoon. Over the past week, the world has followed the story of the sub-Titan and the five people who perished in the terrible tragedy. The purpose of today's press conference is to bring closure to the search and rescue phase of the response and to inform the public of the Coast Guard's next steps. But first and foremost, I want to again express my deepest sympathies to the families. On Saturday, I had the opportunity to travel to St. John's to speak with family members directly. For those that I did not have the opportunity to meet with, I extend my deepest condolences on behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the members of the Unified Command. As I've continued to stress throughout, this case has been extremely complex, involving a coordinated international, interagency, and private sector response in an unforgiving and difficult to access region of the ocean. In total, the Unified Command directed 11 surface assets, five subsurface assets, four air assets, and completed 39 search and rescue sorties, totaling almost 13,000 square miles. And while the outcome was not what any of us had hoped for, I am very proud of the team of responders who put forth their best effort to locate the submersible. While in Canada, I met with and personally thanked members of the Canadian Coast Guard and the Canadian Armed Forces who demonstrated the utmost professionalism and expertise throughout the response. I extended my gratitude to all the professional responders who worked diligently to evaluate all leads, mobilize resources, and maintain hope. Their devotion to duty in the face of many complex challenges ensured that we remained always ready to conduct search and rescue or rescue operations if needed. The discovery of the Titan submersible wreckage 
mark the conclusion of the search and rescue aspect of this incident. The Coast Guard has officially convened a Marine Board of Investigation into the loss of the submersible and the five people on board. That investigation will be led by Chief Investigator Captain Jason Neubauer. So at this time, I will turn over the mic to him, Captain Neubauer. Thank you, Evelyn Mauger. Good afternoon. Before I discuss the Coast Guard's investigation, I want to express my deepest condolences to the loved ones of the five individuals who perished in this tragic incident. The, my team and myself uh, have been investigating this since the, we heard the initial uh, reports of lost communications, and my entire team wanted to express their condolences also. As a senior investigator, I have witnessed the personal impacts associated with these types of events. And my primary goal is to prevent a similar occurrence by making the necessary recommendations to enhance the safety of the maritime domain worldwide. Upon receiving notification that the submersible Titan had suffered a catastrophic failure with the loss of the five lives on board, the Coast Guard declared a major marine casualty and convened a Marine Board of Investigation, commonly referred to as an MBI, on June 23rd. I am serving as the chair for that investigation. An MBI is the highest level of investigation the Coast Guard conducts and enables the U.S. to fully leverage investigative resources Coast Guard-wide and capitalize on an extensive network of cooperative relationships with international maritime administrations and organizations. The MBI is currently in its initial evidence collection phase, including the brief salvage, salvage operations at the incident site and evidence collection in coordination with Canadian authorities in the port of St. John's, Newfoundland. After the on-scene evidence collection efforts conclude, the MBI will typically hold a formal hearing to gather additional witness testimony and evidence in a setting that is available to the public. During the course of the MBI, the board will first and primarily work to determine the cause of this marine casualty and the five associated deaths. The MBI, however, is also responsible for accountability aspects of the incident, and it can make recommendations to the proper authorities to pursue civil or criminal sanctions as necessary. However, any subsequent enforcement activities would be pursued under a separate investigation. The MBI is also working in close coordination with other national, domestic, and international investigative authorities, including the United States National Transportation Safety Board, Canadian Transportation Safety Board, French Marine Casualties Investigation Board, and the United Kingdom Marine Accident Investigation Branch. Upon completion of this investigation, the MBI will issue a report to the Commandant of the Coast Guard, Admiral Linda Fagan, with the evidence collected the facts established, its conclusions, and recommendations. The final report will also be shared with the domestic and international maritime authorities I mentioned, and the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, to help improve the safety framework for submersible operations worldwide. I will now take any questions. Did Thank you. you. Talk a little bit about the evidence gathering right now. Have you already collected? Uh, how, do you, how does that happen? Most people, the, the MBI leverages Coast Guard resources uh, nationwide and also our international partners to, collect, to collectively uh, collect invest evidence. And right now we do have ongoing operations. I mentioned two areas, the on-site at the accident uh, wreckage site. We have an ongoing salvage operation. And we are also currently conducting interviews in the port of St. John's. So you're actually collecting items? Uh, I just, at this time, that is the, the priority of the investigation is to recover items from the seafloor. And how do you think the, like, photographs of the site? How do you get a sense of the debris? Uh, sir, the, 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 we have already mapped the the uh, accident site and, and the field, and so the other factors would be part of the investigation. I, I don't want to get too deep into the details at this time, sir. And what other organizations um, 
the on the coast drives like uh, about other national birds or Yes, sir. I, I listed, uh, you know, several international maritime authorities in my opening statement, including uh, the Canada's Transportation Safety Board, the uh, United Kingdom's Marine Accident Investigation Branch. Uh, it's really parties under international protocols. If they have a substantially interested uh, interest in the investigation, they can uh, request to be part of the Coast Guard's Marine Board. And we've accepted that often uh, citizenship of the uh, the fatalities on board would uh, automatically make that uh, international country or maritime administration a party to our, a substantially interested state and a party. Let's take another question. Sure. 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 I'm not, we are communicating with family members and I, I'm not getting into the details of the recovery operations, but we are taking all precautions on site if we are to encounter any human remains. So as a matter of uh, US law and Coast Guard policy, the Coast Guard doesn't charge for search and rescue, nor do we associate a cost with human life. We always answer the call. And so the ocean remains an unforgiving environment. And every weekend, there are risks that are taken as people go to the water with inadequate safety gear, with inadequate training, uh, or boating while intoxicated. But we still answer the call. We conduct disciplined operations with warranted risk to put our resources and our lives at risk to save others. That's who we are. Uh, certainly that is one of the goals of the MBI. Uh, the that's an opportunity to uh, learn from the incident, and then work with our international partners worldwide to do exactly what you mentioned, improve uh, regulations or international safety standards so that they uh, yeah, but improved oversight over these operations and uh, to prevent a similar occurrence. Do you have an idea how long it takes? I can't give an estimate at this time due to the uh, several of the international investigations uh, going jointly and some of the evidence uh, sharing there really cannot give a, a timeline on the uh, investigation itself. We have time for two more questions. Is there anything to release any photographs uh, or any images? Uh, sir, the the, uh, the Marine Board investigation will not be releasing evidence as it's collected out of uh, concern for other investigative parties and the the families involved. So that that will not be occurring at this time. Yeah, the authority is out of the full of break. Uh, interviews are scheduled with crew members from the Polar Prince. Uh, the salvage operations are ongoing. I'm not going to give the details of what the recovery has been to date, but the resources are on site and uh, capable of recovering the debris. Wow. So there was a lot of information provided in this press conference. For one, the Coast Guard declared the loss of the Titan to be a major marine casualty. And the the search and rescue phase, once the Titan was discovered, that phase was completed because it would be presumed that the five passengers passed away. And so no, um, no abil ability to uh, to rescue. So that phase closed out. And they said on the 23rd, they actually opened a Marine Board of Investigation, an MBI, which is the highest form of investigation at the Coast Guard. And it includes agencies and other countries as well. UK, France, and Canada are involved in this MBI. And one of the things that Captain Neubauer said is that typically the 
uh, the people that are involved in that are often the uh, part of the nationalities of the fatality. So in this case, because the fatalities were British, French, and of course, the US, and there was connection with Canada, those are the four jurisdictions that were included in the MBI. Captain Neubauer will be leading that investigation, and they're currently in the initial evidence collection phase. They're actually doing salvage operations currently. They're at the bottom, and they will probably be gathering up whatever parts of the wreckage are found. And they did. he did say that they have the capability of recovering all of that, bringing it to the surface. So they have the equipment on, uh, on hand to be able to do that. He also said that after the on-scene evidence is collected, they're doing, they're scheduling interviews with people on board the Polar Prince, which was the vessel that took out the Titan, as well as others that are involved. And so that's going to be part of the investigation, not only the evidence collection, but the testimonies, the um, uh, witnesses and, and people that were involved in the operation. The goal is to find out the cause of the incident, why it imploded, and then also potentially find accountability. And they might make recommendations to the proper authorities to pursue civil or criminal sanctions if necessary. So that was kind of a little recap from the press conference. Why it was held on a Sunday when this is a government agency? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Military agency? Not quite sure. I wonder if that was to kind of reduce the number of press that was there and maybe even reduce the amount of interest in it. I just think that it was actually quite fascinating and very interesting to learn about. Not sure. They could have done it on a Monday. They could have done it today. So not sure why. What do you think that's about? And so, yeah, so it looks like we won't know exactly how long it's going to take. It'll probably take at least several weeks to to conclude. I mean, I think everyone from a common sense standpoint knows why the Titan imploded, sadly. And now it's going to be more of an official information and evidence and recommendations that the Coast Guard and the, the MBI team is going to provide. Now, one thing that they did say that was really interesting is that based on those recommendations, that could help to improve the safety for for maritime vessels. So I think that's really great. I almost feel like there's going to be some type, this international body is going to actually pro be providing standards and measures, not just certifications are industry-wide, but this is more of like a regulation. So it sounds like this is based on this tragic accident, there will be regulations in place to try to prevent this type of thing. The fact that this happened, I feel like it has now made people more aware of the potential risks. Because many people that were involved at the high level, you know, even going down to the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench, I mean, they know and they understand the risk. Bringing tourists to these very deep locations, it's a huge, huge risk. Like even Hamish, Hamish Harding, the, the, the British billionaire who died in the Titan. I mean, he'd been down to the Challenger Deep. He understood that there were extreme risks involved. P.H. Nargelet, who was Mr. Titanic, he had been down to the Titanic dozens of times. He understood the risks involved. But having tourists, other passengers, that this is not their life's work, they're not at that level being fully educated and aware of the greater risks that are involved. And I think that's what's important about this type of an MBI, this type of an investigation, and the recommendations and regulations that hopefully come out from this so that we can prevent another tragedy like this. I know that the U.S. Transportation Board is going to be involved too. Is that going to extend to other other areas? You know, if an, if an individual wants to risk their own life on some experimental form of transportation, that's fine. But bringing passengers on board, that's where these boards, these regulatory bodies need to consider the public safety. So what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them in the comments. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, if you learned something, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed so we can be the voice for the voiceless, the empowering voices that are supporting the missing uh, victims and survivors. And with that, stay safe, stay thriving, always follow your intuition and remember to keep it empowering. Bye for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. Thank you.